Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rugby with Pads. As a fledgling podcaster, I'm trying to do things a little bit different and push the envelope a little bit for me, at the very least. This is going to be the first podcast I'm releasing that's not scripted. I'm doing it off the cuff in one take. So hopefully it's going to be warts and all for you to guys to uh, to listen to or see if you're watching this on YouTube. My plan today is to go through a bit of my ranking tiers for drafting because it is draft season after all and do a live mock draft for you as well. The mock draft itself will be for my home league. So any of you guys um, who are my league mates who are listening, you'll get a bit of an insight into what to look forward to tomorrow. And to top it off, I'll do a quick rundown of what if your mock, what if your draft, your proper draft goes wrong and what you can do about it. So jumping straight into it. I don't use ADP anymore. It's something that I did for a long time and it served me okay, but never won me any championships. Last year I switched the tiers and it really helped me you know, win out on four of the four um, finals that I jumped into. It won't be a perfect science, you'll get things wrong, you'll get emotional, but if you stick to tiers, at the very least you won't be disappointed when you leave your draft. Tier based ranking is effectively weighing up each positional group against another. So if you have uh, an elite running back versus an elite wide receiver, how do you compare the running back room versus the wide receiver room? How do you compare your elite quarterbacks against your tight ends? But you do that also within the positional group as well. So you say, okay, well, Josh Allen is going to be my elite quarterback and I'm going to rate everyone else below him up to a certain tier. So even if you miss out on people within a tier that you might be targeting, let's say I was targeting Justin Herbert in the second round, for example, if he doesn't come to me, and I get Patrick Mahomes instead, I've still got someone available at that tier. Or I can pivot and go to a different tier. Or a different position with a similar ranking and similar value in that tier. For those of you watching on YouTube now, you'll be able to see my rankings um, and my tier-based approach. Um, I'll try and highlight for audio listeners some key ones to look out for and the kind of thinking I'll do, but I'll make sure all this is published in the show notes as well. So, starting with quarterbacks, I've already mentioned it, but a cut above everyone else, I've got Josh Allen. He is going to be amazing this year, and I don't think anyone can deny that. If you get him early on, that's great. You're not going to be unhappy with that. I'm seeing people leave him in the first, and it's a set and forget it position. He's going to be brilliant. He's going to run. He's going to throw. He's going to get lots of touchdowns in a really high-powered offense that you can rely on. Going down the list, I have an elite set of quarterbacks, which I personally don't think I'm going to be drafting a huge amount of. Even if they are elite, I still see the other elite groups being of better value. Um, the elite running backs and elite wide receivers, I would want to draft before quarterbacks, but that's just my personal preference. And if you look at these and see your tiers being differently and you value different positions over others, all to you. But the likes of Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes then fall away into the kind of set and forget mentality who have huge upside because they're running and that's where you've got Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray. Then it goes, you know, a big tier drop from there. And you'll see what I've done is I've ranked all of these guys against their typical ADP. So by the time we get to the set and forget it tier, we're down to the fifth or sixth round. From then, I think that's where you have your league winners. And this is where you can really, really dive in and start to start to win your league effectively. Um, the likes of Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott and Russell Wilson, although Dak Prescott with recent news I would be a bit wary of, can really benefit you there and can be your mid-round QB. If you've waited, you're going to kick up a decent QB. But I would make sure that if you want to leave with a QB1, you at least get one before the ninth or 10th round. That's where you'll pick up the likes of Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford and Aaron Rodgers. After that, it goes for me in my bit of a QB dead zone. There is some risk reward types with Trey Lance in there, but then you get into the likes of Derek Carr and you know, the serviceable quarterbacks who aren't going to disappoint you each week, but aren't going to wow you at any point unless they have one particular spike week. I'd like to highlight, though, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is currently going in the late fifth round. I've actually got him rated down with the safe starters with the likes of Kirk Cousins, who you can get right at the end of your draft. 
that's because I don't think there's going to be this upside. There's too much hype around that team. And I'm not sure if they're going to live up to it. I would love to be proved wrong. I love Joe Burrow. I love the Bengals, what they did last year. Yes, they lost out to my Rams, but they played fantastically. And I would have loved to see you know, Joe Burrow win a title in the next couple of years. I just don't think it's going to happen this year. I don't think they have the surrounding pieces and the gel that they need for it to work for him. He's a conservative quarterback. And I think this year he's a bit overhyped. After that, you get your safe backups, people you don't want to be rolling out as your QB1 every year, your Jameis Winston, who I do think has a lot of upside, your Trevor Lawrence, because he's a lot of unknown, your Zach Wilsons, but I always put at the end of my tiers, my sleeper. This year, my sleeper for quarterback is Justin Fields. He was atrocious last year, mainly because he had poor coaching, poor line play, poor everything around him. But this year, I think the running upside can really see him do well. Now, on to running backs. I've talked a lot about my draft strategy episode, but running backs, get them early. And it's obvious who's going to be the earliest. It's Jonathan Taylor. After that, the the rest of the kind of elite quarter, elite running backs speak for themselves. Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Derek Henry, that's who you're going to get. You're going to get some people rated higher than others based on the format you're playing. Austin Eckler and Christian McCaffrey are going to play better in PPR formats than Derek Henry, but you're not going to be disappointed if you walk away with any of them. I'd highlight DeAndre Swift here. I think he's undervalued and very underrated as well. You can get him in the early second round, early to mid second round, depending on how your draft goes. I would target him if you could. Following that, you have some funny ones that I think are just safe running back ones. The Adnaji Harris, Dalvin Kurt, Joe Mixon, who are probably going ahead of DeAndre Swift. But if I were you, I'd actually target DeAndre Swift first. And that's who I'm going to be targeting in my drafts. After that, you have your, you know, your drop off following those. So you've got your last of the elite quarterback, sorry, last of the elite running backs, Aaron Jones, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara. And after that, I am avoiding pretty much everyone from Leonard Fournette in the third round through to probably David Montgomery in the late third, maybe even Antonio Gibson, who's really fading these this year. And I'm going to be waiting until the sixth or seventh round to pick up my next one. So my draft strategy, you can read from there, is actually going to be pick up one or two really elite running backs and then wait, wait for the upside. The one guy that I'm targeting in pretty much every draft because I think he has a safe floor, I think he's going to be solid this year at the very least, is Miles Sanders. You don't give up for him, uh, much for him in the draft. In the seventh round, you've probably got a couple of decent starters at wide receiver. You might even have a quarterback. He's a no-brainer to why you give up. I would highlight after that, though, because I have Cam Akers, even though I'm a Rams fan, rated a lot lower than him. Likewise, Brees Hall and Josh Jacobs, who generally go before him because there's that panic run on running, on running backs. Don't worry if you are running out of running backs. You know, don't go with the herd mentality. Wait for someone to break who's got value to you. And I think that value comes in Miles Sanders, who I have a tier above a lot of the guys going ahead of him. Following that, you've got your fringe RB2s. I'd probably highlight Chase Edmonds because he's someone I'm really targeting as well. I think that the fact that they paid him a lot of money in a crowded backfield speaks volumes. I think there will be a lead back. He's got proven talent and proven efficiency, both running and catching the ball. He's someone I'd target um, later on as well if you are struggling to have those elite running backs. After that, you've got a lot of guys with unsafe floor, a lot of people in running back by committee. I'd avoid the Seahawks. I'd avoid Buffalo. I'd avoid Denver as well. I'm not that high on Javante Williams, even though I think he is going to break out. I'd avoid Kansas City. And I'd probably avoid someone like James Robinson, who's coming back from injury as well. Yes, I know Travis Etienne has come back from injury. He's got the Trevor Lawrence connection. It's a bit unnervy. The only guy I would pick in the unsafe floor category is someone who is ranked incredibly lower than the rest of them in ADP. And that's, again, going to be an Eagles running back, Kenneth Gainwell. He's probably going to be their third down back. He was fantastic when he was in play last year on targets. And I think he can be a real value for you later on. After that, you're swinging for the fences. It's backups. 
The only one that I would maybe switch up now, based on recent news, is Damian Pierce. He is going to be the lead back on a rubbish team, but he's going to be the lead back. And sometimes all you need in running backs is volume. So that's my tears. I'm not going to be disappointed if I get anyone in the elite or safe or second round target group. All of these guys are based on people that I would like to walk away with. And if I'm get any of them in that group, I see them as being equivalent to one another. Now, wide receivers. Again, the first few picks are going to be really obvious. I have Cooper Cup ranked so highly because even if he falls off a cliff, he gets 20% less production, five less touchdowns. He would still have been the, the wide receiver one last year. After that, Justin Jefferson is going to be a top five overall prospect. I think he's got the safest floor out of anyone, especially with Kevin O'Connell's offense this year. And then you've got proven commodities like Stefan Diggs and Javante Adams. After that, I do think there's a bit of a drop off and players who have a lot of hype around them, like Jamar Chase, there is going to be a regression. And I've already spoken about it with Joe Burrow. If I'm not in love with Joe Burrow, I'm not in love with Jamar Chase. There are some great pickups in likes of Keenan Allen, who I will probably be targeting quite heavily in PPR leagues. And I think the one guy I would really highlight is Michael Pittman. There is massive opportunity for him to succeed. He's got all the all the hallmarks of a successful wide receiver that you would want with a known commodity, a quarterback now. First time he's ever had that. I would be targeting him heavily at the end of that every week starter. After that, you get a lot of guys who've got a lot of upside with uncertain QB play, though. The two guys that I would avoid, though, that are normally being drafted quite early are Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. There aren't many quarterbacks who can sustain more than one relevant fantasy wide receiver. And because of that, I can't tear them apart. I'm going to be avoiding them in most of my drafts. You might think differently. If you think Tyreek Hill is going to take that field and he's he's going to make it his own that's great but Jalen Waddle was the I think he was the rookie rookie wide receiver with the most receptions ever last year correct me if I'm wrong I'm not great on the statistics side of things but he was amazing and because of that I can't tear them apart so I won't be drafting either of them after that I think your league winner there that you're going to have after that little group of uncertain QB play that includes DK Metcalf and AJ Brown is going to be Cortland Sutton. I've spoken to him a lot about, spoken about him a lot in the last episode, but he is going to be my hyper targeted player. It helps that I've got him in a dynasty league or two, but um, I think he's going to be fantastic. After that, you've got likes of Alan Robinson. I would not be unhappy if I ended up with Brandon Cooks, even though he seems to be the most unpopular pick in the world. Follow that, you've got the, um, what I've called the six games isn't that long group where I've put DeAndre Hopkins and Marquise Hollywood Brown in together. If I could, and I have the positional depth already, I will be targeting DeAndre Hopkins in the seventh. And I've already spoken about that a lot. If not, if Marquise Brown falls to me, I'll definitely be picking, picking him up too. After that, it's much of the same. We're going to get some fringe wide receiver two guys, Amon Ross St. Brown is going to have a great season, I think. I think he's golf proof And I think, even so, a lot of people talk down on Jared Goff. I think he's got a really good chance to have a bit of a comeback player season this year. Following that, we've got the Buyer Beware group. Juju Smith-Schuster, he's a fantastic player. He was a fantastic rookie. But since he's left the Steelers, I'm not convinced he's going to really capture what we all think he can be, even with Patrick Mahomes in the centre. I do like Rashad Bateman in a low passing offence though, where Mark Andrews is probably going to be the target hog. I'm just thinking who else is there? And Rashad Bateman has a lot of upside there. I think there's a, there's a good chance he could do well there, but by the way, Lamar may never ever throw it to him. Um, I think the one I would like to highlight there in the kind of next round, next tier kind of break is Brandon Ayuk. I think there's massive potential there. And I am after that targeting Robert Woods heavily. He's a great floor play. You know what you're getting with him. He's a league veteran. He's going to be the number one target in that offense after Traylon Burks hasn't really showed up. 
that's where I'd target. And I would target him ahead of Terrell on Burks, who is being drafted way before him at the moment. After that, you've got your sleepers. I would be looking at players like... Hmm, I'm not sure who I'm looking at this year because it seems to change every single time I do a mock draft. But I really like the idea of Jalen Tolbert. Cowboys are going to be run through Zeke and run through Dak, depending on which given week it's going to be and how Jerry Jones wants his team to play. But um, I would say Jalen Tolbert has a great chance to fall into that wide receiver two role behind CeeDee Lamb with Michael Gallup having so many injury concerns and the offensive line being suspect, I I would say. Playing him in the slot is going to mean he's going to see a lot of targets and he's someone that I'm throwing a dart at the end. If, If I have to lose him after week two, I have to lose him after week two, but that's what you get with your late round sleepers. Now, moving on to tight ends, and kind of we're going to leave it at tight ends actually before I, so I can get into the draft straight after this. Mark Andrews is going to be great for your fantasy team. If you manage to have him and you have the guts to take him in the second round, you think you can build a team around him and uh, you know, a, a great running back, do that. He's going to be a target monster. He will be the tight end one, possibly two, depending on how Kelsey does, but he's going to be fantastic. I mentioned in the last episode, even though he's really high in my tiers because he's a fantastic player, I will not be targeting Travis Kelsey whatsoever. I think he will kill your team. Go back and listen to episode two or three if you want to listen to that, but I will not be drafting him. After that, I think you're probably overpaying for Kyle Pitts. And the likes of George Kittle and Darren Waller, they're safe. It's boring. You know what you're going to get, and it's an every week starter. The guy I'm going to be targeting in the 6th or 7th round is going to be TJ Hawkinson. Or, if you're going down there a little bit, Dalton Schultz is starting to interest me a bit more, especially with the line play breaking down for uh, Dallas at the moment. TJ Hawkinson is going to be that safety valve for Goff. He's got a great relationship. If you watch Hard Knocks, he's fantastic. And sometimes you just want to draft players you want to root for. After that... I'm guessing you're going to be finding, if you're drafting tight end late, like I say, you're going to be finding people like Zach Ertz just glaring at you. Fill fill the position. And Zach Ertz will be available. He's like the Brandon Cooks of tight ends. No one really wants to draft him, but you're not going to be upset if you do. So he's someone I've been walking away with a lot. There's some good roster value coming out next. I think Pat Frymuth is going to be interesting this year, see if he, he does live up to the hype that he should have done last year. Hunt Henry will be found late. I spoke to him about him a bit in my last episode. I think he'll be very heavily targeted in the end zone as well. Tyler Higby, I think, is going to be a fantastic value. The Rams' offense doesn't run through the tight end, but some games he's going to be fantastic. If you are streaming tight ends and you think there's a great matchup, Tyler Higby, having him on your team is going to be fantastic. You can pick him up for next to nothing. He'll probably wave a wild fodder after week two or three. So drive him if you want, but I think he's going to be fantastic value and I think he could surprise a lot of people. After that, I've got everyone else. You know, the people that you're not going to be too bothered about whether you have have them or not, but the likes of you know Gerald Everett, Mike Kosicki, who has had a bit of suspect stuff around him at the moment. Noah Fant, I think, is going to be fine in the Seahawks. But these guys are just just guys, just jags. They're just another guy on the team. The one guy out of that lot, though, who I think is going to be interesting is Cole Komet. He will probably be the number two pick, uh, sorry, number two um, target in his offense. So I'd be going after him if I could. Following that, you've got my sleepers. I think Donald Parham, who is basically free, he will be on the waiver wire, don't bother drafting him. And Mo Ali Cox could be really interesting. If you've got a deep bench, stash them, but I think they're going to be really interesting. So that's my tiers. Again, I would take a look at these. I'll make them available in the show notes. If you like them, great. If not, it's based on a Google sheet. You can go and edit it as much as you want. This is not fantastic IP. This is just how I feel that these should be ranked and how I will be approaching each of my drafts. And I'll be demonstrating that next. I've been um, drafting my home league now, in a mocks anyway, um, for quite some time. And 
my home league is a bit interesting because it's been an ongoing league for, that's changed over the years, but ultimately it's turned into a keeper league. I am drafting from the three spot. So our keeper rules mean we cannot take any player we had or we used as a keeper the year before or any player we drafted the year before in the first two rounds. So it stops us getting elite players, stops us taking Christian McCaffrey every year, but there are players who are elite who are kept. You'll see the guys who came first, you know, the guy who came first last year is probably going to keep Debo Samuel. The guy who came fourth last year is going to keep Cooper Cup. Justin Jefferson's available in the third. You know, the guy who came second has got a fantastic opportunity with Michael Pittman so late. I think that's great value. And the rest of us are taking players that performed well, but they basically undrafted last year. I picked up Travis Etienne right in the last week, thinking that I can use him next year, even though he was on injured reserve, and that's who I'm going to go with my keeper. So, with that, I'm going to start going through my draft. Um, and again, for all my league mates listening, this is where you want to tune in, because you'll probably be able to guess exactly who I'm going to pick <laughs> um, come tomorrow. But uh, I've got a bit of a strategy built out this, because I've drafted it probably... 25 30 times because this is the league i really really want to win for each round up to round 11 i've got a player who i'm primarily targeting a player who's going to be my secondary tertiary and then a player if they drop who's going to be the the win that's going to be the value that i see in each round so without further ado i'm going to take a glass of water and i'll get into it and i'll start talking you through some of my thoughts what i would do in certain situations and go from there after that i'm going to do a quicker draft of where it all falls apart so i'll do a draft where i go against my rules for the first three rounds and then see if i can salvage it and what i'll do is i'll post both teams on my twitter you can vote for which one's better and which one i did the best job with so now i've talked to your ear for 20 minutes let's start this draft So first things first, I'm turning off all the notifications because I don't want it ringing in your ear for the entirety that you're listening to this. Very unprofessional. You can see I am an amateur podcaster. Now, my number one pick, it's going to be Austin Eckler every time if he comes to me. If Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey or Derek Henry came to me as well, I'd be really happy. But I love Eckler. He's a player that I can root for. He's on a great team. And I think he's going to be fantastic. And he helped me win a couple of leagues last year. So I'm definitely picking him up. Um, in the rest of the first round, yeah, you've got the normal guys. Devontae Adams went early. Jamal Chase went early. Chris Cooper Cup is already a keeper. On the turn, you've got John Doe Swift, who, again, I've mentioned before, go after him. And Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews went before it came back to me. Now, I was looking to target someone who was a bit riskier. I wanted an Aaron Jones or a Saquon Barkley, but instead, because they didn't fall to me, I'm going to the player who is probably secondary on my list in the second round. I'm going to go with Alvin Kamara. I think he's going to be fantastic this season. Fortunately, it looks like he's going to you know, miss out on that suspension until next year. So fingers crossed he's going to come good for me. At the end of the second, you've got Josh Allen going. Followed shortly by uh, Patrick Mahomes. So I'm looking at that one and two spot and thinking, right, they've already got quarterbacks. That means if it comes on that turn, I can start to play with that a little bit. Now, the, sec the third round is probably where I'm going to be picking up a... <sighs> yeah, it's definitely where I'm going to be picking up my first wide receiver. Now, I'm a bit torn because Mike Evans is the ADP choice here. He's got... Tom Brady I'm also weighing up between Keenan Allen but in this situation I'm actually going to go with the ADP and probably a bit against my gut I think Keenan Allen could have a great year but I'm also backing Austin Eckler to have a great year and I think they're going to be competing a little bit I'm going to back Austin Eckler to have a better year than Keenan Allen so probably against my better judgment and this might form my choices later on in terms of stacking I'm going to go with Mike Evans so for the rest of the Second round, you've got typical lots of wide receivers going. AJ Brown, Keenan Allen goes at the end. You've got Cam Akers as early as the third round, which surprises me because I think he's a very risky prospect. 
coming back to me. Unfortunately, one of the players I was really holding out hope for that would come to me, Cortland Sutton, has actually gone. He was one of my type of targeted players. And if you look at ADP now, the guy who's screaming out to me is Justin Herbert. Now, it makes a lot of sense. I've got Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is going to be a great receiving back. He's going to get thrown a lot of touchdowns. Is that stack worth it? In my opinion, stacks are only worth it if you can elevate one player over another, i.e. it gives a lot more value in the draft. Because they're so closely played together, they're not actually providing me a huge amount of value. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Now, in the fourth round, I want Sutton, I want DK, I want someone like that. But I'm actually going to go a bit further down the list and go for a player that I've been targeting quite a lot, Alan Robinson. He is a born wide receiver. He's going to be fantastic. And I'm going to be picking him up, even though he's not rated as a wide receiver one in most people's rankings, I think he's going to have a wide receiver one season. And whilst players are going to, whilst teams are going to be looking at Cooper Cup, I think Alan Robinson is going to feast. Now, on the turn, DJ Moore, Josh Jacobs, Deontay Johnson, J J Jerry Judy. Okay, there, those are typical players. None of them who I would actually probably go for. Round five, I was saying my primary target here would be Alan Robinson. And I'm going to take a bit of a step here because actually I've already talked about the fact I didn't want to take Keenan Allen. But I'm actually going to take Mike Williams this time around, mainly because I see there's a huge amount of value in him. Keenan Allen is expensive. He's going early in the third round, early to mid in the third round. And he's probably someone I target quite often if I don't get Eckler because I want a piece of that offense. I think Mike Williams is a different kind of player to Austin Eckler. He's not playing too close to the line of scrimmage. He's going to be playing much further down. So I think there's less competition to bite into each other's points there. So with that said, I'm going to go against what I should be doing and not stacking too much of that team. And I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for Mike Williams. I think you know a bit of risk and volatility is always good at a team. And I've already talked about balancing risk between rounds and that's what I'm going to be doing on the next. Now towards the end of the fourth you've got some more quarterbacks going, you've got Justin Herbert going, Kyler Murray, yeah, okay sorry that was the fifth round, apologies. Lamar Jackson coming back on the sixth, Dalton Schultz, okay we're rapidly running out of uh, tight ends to, to come and play with and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and Elijah Mitchell were picked up. So this is where you get into running back dead zone. If I flick to running backs, you know, I've already got three on my roster. There aren't many that I want to pick up. I've spoken about Miles Sanders, and maybe it's the right time, but I'm going to assess my other options as well. Now, in the sixth, I've already said that I wanted Alan Robinson because he does drop in a lot of drafts, and I probably want TJ Hawkinson as well. So I'm just going to weigh up where TJ Hawkinson is at the moment. Has he been drafted? Let's look at tight ends. He hasn't. Okay. So if I look at that positional group, I've got some great you know, running backs. I'm happy with that. I'm really, really happy with one and two. I've got some great right receive, wide receivers. Wouldn't be unhappy to roll all of them out each week. So you know what? I am actually going to do what I tell people not to do. And I'm going to draft a tight end early. But before I do that, I'm just going to check what... Yeah. So the players in the two and one slot who've got four picks before I come back none of them have tight ends. So that's where I'm going to inform my decision. They could well pick him up, a player who I don't want to really miss out on. Yes, it's only four picks away, but I'm going to stretch a little bit in my own rankings and go for TJ Hawkinson. Oh, and ah, okay, so that was what I was a bit worried about, but never panic. Miles Sanders did go to the team in slot one, but I'm still going to keep, keep going. So... Make sure you have a plan and you can reasonably stick to it. At this point, I'm potentially thinking about, okay, how do I round up my roster a little bit? So I'm going to go back to the ADP and look who appears to me. I've said early on that if I can, I want to be able to stack my play as well. Now, I could look at some of my quarterbacks, or some sorry, wide receivers and say, okay, who's going to have great play? But there is a potential league winner screaming at me and I don't think he's coming back to me. There are a lot of picks between the third, pick, the third pick in the seventh round and the eighth pick in the eighth round. And I don't think he'll be here when I get back. I'm going to strike early. 
there are teams out there between me and him, sorry, me and the next pick, who don't have quarterbacks, and I'm going to pick up Jalen Hurts. He's going to have fantastic upside in any league that gives points for running. He's going to be a great player. He's going to have a safe floor. And when I'm balancing risk, I've had a lot of risk in Mike Williams and potentially even Alan Robinson swinging to the fences. I need to know I can secure some points each week. He was a consistent performer last year. Someone I wanted, I desired last year and never got a piece of. I'm going to go for Jalen Hurts. Now, already based on I've drafted a load of times already, this is not turning out how I would expect. I've drafted some players that I don't normally do, but I'm still happy with what I'm doing because I'm sticking to my tier-based rankings and the plan that I'm, I'm working around. Now, coming up next, uh, just at the turn, Tom Brady went really early. He went late in the seventh, so I'm really glad I didn't wait on quarterback because he was probably going to be the next person I targeted. Maybe I would have looked at Stafford if he dropped at me as well because you got that link up with A-Rob. And just before me, Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, two running backs I'm not really interested in have come through. But one of the players I would have done if I'd had a deeper wide receiver roster would have been DeAndre Hopkins, went just before me. So in my opinion, there's no one there who I would have really wanted to hyper-target or take. So the world is my oyster. Looking at the rankings that I've got here in round eight, I'm thinking about... Okay, I'm thinking about how do I round out my roster and give myself a bit of a flaw. I've taken some risks and I'm going to go deep. I'm not going to take anyone on the first or page or even second page. I'm going to go and pick and reach for someone who probably would have come back to me. Now, Sleeper has this great thing where it tells you where the line is that's probably going to come back to you. And just below that line that would have come back to me is Robert Woods. I'm going to pick him up because A, he's a player that I love to root for. Um, I've got a jersey. He's fantastic. And I think he's going to be fantastic. He's, he's just going to be that floor play, that player that you know is going to perform each week. Yes, he would have come back to me, but as there wasn't anyone else there that I really wanted, and I've made sure that I really, really wanted Robert Woods, I've already talk, talked about him already, that's who I've gone for. Now, in round nine, um, I'm looking at players who, again, could complement the rest of the team. I've already talked about Woods. I think he's brilliant. Um, I've already talked about, you know what? I'm going to pivot a little bit. I think I'm just going to swing for the fences here and go for a player who I think could be really interesting, but I don't think it's going to come back to me because I look at my, my team and I think it's great. It's turned out really, really fantastic so far. I've missed out on Damian Pierce, who just went um, before. There's no one in the rest of the running backs. There's Chase Edmonds, who, again, I've said is great, but I'm really happy with three running backs. But after that, who are the running backs looking like? Okay, I was going to be targeting Trey Lance, but upon reflection, and I'm going to... Go, I'm probably going to curse myself later, but I'm going to go with my own advice, and I said, Chase Edmonds is going to be good. Follow the money. I am going to pick up Chase Edmonds to be my fourth running back. And after that, I'm probably going to leave the running back position alone. After that, Devin Singletary, James Cook, Gordon. Yeah, players who I didn't want have gone there. Tyler Lockett, who I think is going to be great value if he gets good quarterback play, went in the um, early in the 10th. Um, we've got Sky Moore, just went just before. I think he's going to be a great player. So I'm going to go back to my crib sheet here. And... I've said here that ideally, if I haven't already, I want a QB. This is a weird mock draft because all the QBs that I would normally pick have already gone. But I did say I wanted Trey Lance. If I look at my roster, I've got Jalen Hurts. He's got a buy in week seven. So at the very least, I probably want a quarterback who's going to be complimentary and is going to play that week. It means I'm not going to pick up Matthew Stafford, who I think is a great chance. I'm going to pick a player who I think could be a potential league winner, and he did come back to me. He was a player I was potentially going to reach for in the last round. I'm very glad I didn't, and this is why you mock people, so you know what can and should happen. I'm going to go for Trey Lance. Yes, there's players I need elsewhere. I need a kicker. I need a defense. I probably need more running backs and wide receivers, but I'm going to go Trey Lance because I think the value is there, and he could be just as good if not better than, um, than Jalen Hurts was last year for a much lower draft capital. 
I was just about to say, um, I'm surprised that Dak Prescott has gone, uh, hasn't gone yet. And the guy who picked up Josh Allen in the second round has gone and got Dak Prescott. I don't get that when players do that, when, when you've got two players who, where well, you've got a player who is a complete set and forget, and then you pick up a backup for them. If they're set and forget, set and forget them. That week that they're not playing, stream someone. That's all you need to do. Make sure you use your roster really well and you're clever about how you do it. Now, round 11 is the last round that I you know, mapped out. And from here on in, really, it's value. So I'm going to look at my roster and see where it's got holes. I've got four running backs. That's probably all I'm going to go into. I've got two quarterbacks, which means less things. I'm going to go where I think the points are going to come from. And I'm going to go and target and probably hyper target wide receiver for the next couple of rounds. I'm going to go with Kadarius Tony. I think he could be the number one receiving option in the offense. Yes, again, it's going to be a rubbish offense, but if you saw him play between the injuries, I think he's fantastic. And I think he's going to be really interesting this year. Again, if he doesn't work out, I'm not unhappy. I've got a great squad otherwise. The rest of the 11th and 12th round isn't that interesting. You've got bit part players, Cole Komet, who I think would have been great if I hadn't had DJ TJ Hawkinson as well. Um, so I'm going to look for more value. I'm just going to dig down the ADP. I'm going to skip past all the kickers because I'm always drafting a kicker last if I can. I'm looking at the rest of my draft. Okay, this is really the last pick I have before I have to take up a kicker in a defense. So I'm thinking about who I've got left. I've got one, two, three for five wide receivers i could see if there's any value elsewhere tyler boyd i've already talked about how i think that's a boring and obvious choice at this point um jarvis landry no Jahan dotson it could be interesting as well romeo dubs again all of these players because it's my last really free pick if i lose out on them i don't really mind too much so i'm just going to pick the best value that i think is there and you know what something that's jumping out at me and it's something i've talked about not doing actually i'm not going to do it. i'm going to talk myself out of it i was thinking about isaiah spiller as a handcuff for my first round running back austin eckler it's not someone i'm going for i'm going to go for kenneth gainwell i think he could be really interesting and actually potentially win the starting job away um, depending on certain situations if he pairs well with jalen hurts i think that's great so I'm just going to go for it. And if he doesn't work out in week one, it doesn't matter. And to round it off, yeah, I'll pick up Justin Tucker because for the memes, I guess, he, he's going to kick it very far and very often. If I have to drop him first week, don't care. Again, always draft your kickers last and you shouldn't care about them. Not that kickers aren't people too. They're just not really people in fantasy. And then that runs out my draft order. I've just picked the Colts because I was picking a team, just pick a team with the lightest schedule each week. Um, and that's that's where I'm going for. So my team ended up being Jalen Hurts, Austin Eckler, Alvin Kamara, Mike Evans, Alan Robinson, TJ Hawkinson, Mike Williams, and a kicker in a defense who is going to be interchangeable throughout. And then on my bench, I've got Robert Woods, who I think is a great floor play. Chase Edmonds, again, I think follow the money. I think there's something interesting in that. Trey Lance, again, league winner opportunity. Kadarius Tony, bad offense, great player. Kenneth Gainwell and Travis Etienne, who is my keeper, who I think I would probably promote to my flex spot um, in certain situations. He's going to be playing most weeks. So that's my mock draft, my home league, how I am probably going to be playing it tomorrow. What I wanted to do as a final, final last push is do the same thing, but what if I ignore my own advice for the first, shut up for two, three? I'm going to ignore my own advice for the first four rounds and then see if I can salvage a team. So that means I'm probably going to go QB early, tight end early, wide receiver early, wait on a running back and then see if I can salvage it based on my tier advice. This could be a car crash. Um, I've not done this this year, except once when I've done, maybe done it for a couple of rounds. But if I do it through four rounds, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. I'll try and go through this one a bit quicker because you've heard my thoughts and opinions on, on other players. The computer's probably going to draft in a similar way. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump in. 
And again, my first pick, it's fallen to me again. I would love to pick up Austin Eckler, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to pick up the best wide receiver available to me. Cooper Cup is not available because he was a keeper uh, in the fifth round. Lucky git who got that. So I am going to pick up. Oh, goodness. I didn't realize um, Justin Jefferson isn't available as well. I've already said I don't like Jamar Chase, but ooh. again, I said I was going to go against my own advice. I'm going to pick up Jamar Chase way too early. I've overpaid for him, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the round goes as you would think. All the players you would think are going. John Swift at the end always does. No tight ends yet. Oh, tight end goes there. Okay. And coming back to me, I've got the option on ADP. Oh, I've got Tyreek Hill jumping out of me, Josh Allen, Mark Andrews. You know what? I'm going to go with a player who I think is going to be the number one in their position. And he, if I go by my tiers, but against my own advice, I think he's going to be fantastic. I'm going to go with Mark Andrews. So, so far, I've got Jamar Chase and Mark Andrews. Josh Allen dips just before. And then I think, all right, who's next? And I'm going to, again, ignore my advice and make sure I go. I don't wait on QB. And I'm going to go QB early. In my tiers, I've got Justin Herbert slightly ahead of Patrick Mahomes. And I think for this exercise, it'd be interesting to take Justin Herbert in the third, who is normally picked into late third slash early four. So I'm going to pick Justin Herbert and see if I can play around with the mess of my team to uh, to actually make this work. Patrick Mahomes went straight after pretty much. And then you get players who are coming out of the RB dead zone. It's, it's your Brees Halls, it's your Cam Akers, David Montgomery's. And the final pick for a team I'm going to ruin my life with here. Again, I'm not going against the tiers. I'm going against the general consensus of what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm not going to pick up a running back. Instead, I'm going to pick up my wide receiver one, the player who I think is going to be a fantastic league winner. I'm going to be picking up Cortland Sutton in the fourth. So, so far, my team is Jamar Chase, Mark Andrews, Justin Herbert, and Cortland Sutton. This feels so horrible doing this because I feel like I'm completely out of control. So let's pivot. Let's go back to my advice. Let's go to my tiers. So sorry if you hear any rustling of paper here, but I'm thinking about who's next in my tiers and who I need to fill out here. So if you end up in this situation where you've been panicked into getting certain players, think about who is around you, who's drafting next, who's drafted before, what they've got, and ultimately what you need. I'm looking at this roster and I'm thinking, right, I need a running back. There aren't any running backs in the next chunk of players who I really want. So I'm probably going to avoid that and probably wait slightly more and see if I can get value later on in the draft. The, I've already know what I've got, Travis Etienne. So if he was my number one, you know what, I can live with that. So let's carry on through the draft. The next player I probably want to get is that wide receiver three. I think that's where I'm really going to going to excel in this draft it's going to be picking up on that and going that zero rb strategy until later on it's something i don't like doing but it's something i'm going to do and i'm being forced into so alan robinson again you fall into my team i'm going to pick you i like you a bit more than mike williams actually ignore that completely i'm going to go mike williams again because i think that pairing with justin herbert is going to be fantastic and that is a value stack there in it and i just staring me right in the face and i should have picked up on it so Mike Williams, get on my team. For the rest of fifth, you've got Brandon Cooks again, great player. Kyler Murray finally went. J.K. Dobbins, a player that I'm not particularly interested in. Alan Robinson did go before he came back to me, but I look at my wide receiver room, I'm really happy with that. I've got three great studs there. So now I'm going to be thinking, what else is there? TJ Hawkinson would be really interesting to me, but I've got my set it and forget it tight end. So I'm going to ignore tight end completely. If I could, on, on this, just ignore them or blank out tight ends and quarterbacks from now on, I would do, but I can't, so I'm going to pick what's next. And the next player who I think is going to be a tear drop-off is going to be Miles Sanders. I've talked to him already. I think he's going to be a fringe RB1. He's going to be a consistent performer. Let's go for him. So I've got my two running backs. I'm going to ignore quarterbacks. I've got a great one here. I've got to say, forget it. I'm going to be looking for value. Now, these are players that I think are going to be really interesting should the right things happen. And 
Mm, there's someone calling out to me, DeAndre Hopkins, but I do need to address what's missing in my team first before I go after that. And it's still running back. Damian Harris in a standard format where you're not getting extra points for catching, I think is going to be fantastic. In half PPR, his value drops a little less because he's lose less in the third downs. But you never know with Belichick and how he's going to play this year. He could be a bell cow back for us. And I think he showed enough running talent last year to be really interesting. So he's going to be my third running back. He's not quite dead zone, but after that, I think it gets really worrying. So because this is a necessity, I'm going to go Damian Harris. For the rest of the rounds, you've got Russell Wilson going, Jalen Hurts. Players I love, but based on the situation, I'm not going to be picking up. Uh, Hawkinson went towards the end of the seventh. Dak Prescott went earlier, and DeAndre Hopkins fell before went before he went uh, went before he got to me. Now, just to recap, I think I've got an okay team here. You know, quarterback, I've got Justin Herbert, I've got Miles Sanders, Damian Harris, uh, Travis Etienne as well. Back in there, he gets dropped because he's a he's a keeper. Jamar Chase, again, he's a first round wide receiver. So it's like I would have drafted him anyway, should I have been later. Cortland Sutton, who is a, my number one pick anyway. And Mike Williams and Mark Andrews, who I think is going to be that number one pick anyway. So from here on in, I'm looking for value. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking back through my tiers. And again, Chase Edmonds just jumps out at me. If I look at who else is around him, I don't really need wide receivers none of these wide receivers are going to be jumping out at me tom brady's although he's great he was a pairing i had last year with justin herbert in a super flex league he's going to be great i'm not in love with tony pollard he's a running back for the sake of having a running back i'm happy to go into this fake season with three running backs if needs be i might pick one right at the end but i think chase edmonds just screams value there and for all the reasons i've told you know follow the money sometimes follow the hype follow your gut Go for it and see what happens. And this is why we mock, to see what these these kind of situations happen. What I find is that no matter what happens, I end up later on in the draft picking the same kind of players because you just end up falling into the same patterns. And I'm probably going to do the same. Um, Trey Lance has fallen to me once again, but you know I can't pass up Robert Woods, and I'm just worried he might be picked up by a wide receiver needy team such as team nine who in this one went running back running back running back running back running back running back six running backs in a row yeah, their team is is trash and it's the computer going crazy there and just testing me out but i'm going to be picking up robert woods um, to probably round off my wide receiver room and i'm probably not going to visit back there unless there's some insane value later on so that was my pick in the ninth um keep my fingers and toes crossed that Trey Lance doesn't go, but do I even pick him up? He didn't go. And my question now is, is he going to have any value over Justin Herbert? Probably not. But again, you need someone to play in that other week. Justin Herbert has got a, I can't even see. I think he's, yeah, he's got his buy in the eighth. Trey Lance got a ninth. That's reason enough for me. He's a player that I'm hyper-targeting anyway. I'm going to go with Trey Lance. And coming back to me in the 11th, again, this is my second to last real pick before I have to pick uh, other, other players just to fill out my roster. I'm looking at the rest of my rankings, and I've already said he was great, but Kadarius Tony. Um, I'm actually going to swing a bit high because I don't think he's going to come back to me. And I like always having a bit of a number one or number two um, receiver on any given team. And I'm going to stick with my gut and go Cole Komet. Yes, I know Mark Andrews is going to outplay him every week, but you've got to have someone playing in the bye week. And at this point, they're throwaway picks. You know, So think about it that way. Take the risk in the later rounds. Swing for the fences. Swing for someone you like, you think is going to be interesting to play. And um, funny enough, Kadarius Tony, I think, was still available. Did he go? No, he went. So I'm going to be thinking, right, who is just an interesting player that I would like to pick up? Skip past all those guys. Russell Gage isn't interesting. Jarvis Landry isn't interesting. I don't want another quarterback. I don't want another tight end. So I'm going to look at the wide receiver market. Hmm. The running back market. You know what? I went late RB, so... Let's go for a running back who I think is going to potentially break out and could be the number one. And 
He's a bit of a draft darling at the moment. I think he could be really interesting should it all go to pot in Casey and Clyde Edwards-Alaire not be great. I'm going to go with, um, I think it's Pacheco. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but I'm going to go with, um, yeah, Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco? Yeah, Pacheco. <laughs> Sorry, my pronunciation is, is terrible with that. As I've said before, the last two, I'm just going to pick any kicker, go top left, Evan McPherson, why not? Um, if you get the opportunity, it might be nice to pick up the the kicker that's tied with your quarterback, but it's not a guarantee that it's going to be great. So I'm going to go Evan McPherson. And finally, for my defense, it's not going to matter. I'm just going to hold my cursor over the top left and see who falls to me. And it's going to be the Indianapolis Colts again. Great. And, and you get a lot of this with the computer. It's not going to look like this in real life, but you will quite often find, even if you draft against real people, that you'll be drafting similar kind of players. So just to recap, I ignored all my own advice and ended up kind of going zero RB. I got Jamar Chase in the first round, Mark Andrews in the second, Justin Herbert in the third, and Cortland Sutton, who I think it would be one of my picks in the fourth. And he is probably where I would pick him anyway. In the circumstances, I would have probably wanted to get a running back at that point. But looking around it, I probably wouldn't have wanted a Cam Akers or David Montgomery or Antonio Gibson. So I'm quite happy that I continued on and went 0RB once I'd committed to it. My team ended up being Justin Herbert, Miles Sanders, Damian Harris, Jamar Chase, Cortland Sutton, Mark Andrews, Mike Williams, a kicker and a defence, and on the bench, Chase Edmonds, Robert Woods, Trey Lance, Cole Komet, Isaiah Pacheco, and Travis Etienne. A little bit running back heavy in the end because I needed to make sure that I had opportunities with value to swing there later. But I don't think that's actually a bad team. I think the fact I've got three, maybe even four potential wide receiver ones on my team, I think is something that I'm really happy with. Um, and it's actually worked out much better than, than yeah, I thought. What I'll do is on Twitter, I'll post a poll um, rugby, at rugby with pads. You can decide which team you like better, my 0RB, everything fell apart, or my actual planned team. And I'd love to hear from you uh, and let me know. I'm going to be posting this without editing it because I'm trying to be brave and I'm trying to see what podcasting is really like. It's not a scripted format that you necessarily want to have perfectly tailored to exactly what you want to say. It's not something that I want to turn into a play. This is something that I just want to talk about what I feel uh, about fantasy football and how I think I like playing it. And hopefully I can get you guys interested and on board with my way of thinking. Not that I'm trying to create an army of uh, people who think like me. Anyway, it's late now in mine, uh, in my house. Um, I hope the rest of you have a fantastic bank holiday weekend. If you have your drafts, let me know how they go. Again, you can get me on Twitter at rugby with pads or an email rugbywithpads at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you very much. If you've listened this far, if you've watched this on YouTube, that's fantastic. Give me a big thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you. Leave it in the comments, even if it's you know really rude and you think I've made a massive mistake, please do get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, without further ado, thank you very much. And I'll see you on the virtual gridiron. <laughs>